Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Hope Lutheran Church. Today is Trinity Sunday, and uh, where we contemplate the mystery of God being three persons and yet one God. So my sermon will be more on that. And then we will also be accepting our new members and welcoming them in, and you'll get an opportunity to meet them as we go along. We begin as we always do. God is good. And all the time. Okay. A few announcements. First of all, uh, after our worship service today, our, our youth will have Crafty Corner. And I see Emily's back there. She'll be leading. And so um, that will be after church in the youth room. Then I also wanted to mention we've got Summer Stretch coming up. And this is for anyone uh, who is going to be in middle school or if you just finished middle school last year. And this is really a neat event. So I just want to put in a plug for, for all of our middle school students and their parents to give this a consideration. It's a chance to do some service opportunities in our community and also have a, a, an opportunity in the afternoon then for some special fun. Okay. Speaking of special fun, uh, we have chartered a bus to go to the Twins Stadium when they're playing the Brewers. That's coming up in July. And if you'd like to be on the bus, uh, let us know in the office area and we can put your name down. It's 65 bucks. That's for the ticket as well as the bus ride. Okay, our weekly update. You can see that uh, on the water mitigation, we're just about halfway there. So way to go, people. We'll continue this through the month of June. And then on the next slide, I just wanted to say we are going to be starting on that door project where we're going to be taking down the doors, removing the hardware, and getting them up to the place where they're going to paint them. So we've got a sign-up list on the kiosk in the welcome area. And if you can help with that, it's going to be on Thursdays starting in June. I think it's five weeks that it's going on. So please check that out if you can help. We need, we need muscle and, and mechanical stuff. And, and Mark Larson will be leading the charge, and, and so he'll kind of be directing the whole thing. Okay, later on in our service, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. Just wanted to make sure those of you who are joining us by Facebook today, get your elements ready and you'll be ready to join us later on. And finally, a thank you for your continued giving to the ministries of our congregation. If you brought an offering with you, we have a large gray vase just outside these doors here. You can place it in there. We also have many ways that you can give electronically. So those are our announcements for now, and I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin as we always do with our mission statement. As God's people, abounding in hope and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we invite all to share in the unfolding experience of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading is from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and then verses 22 through 31. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bit of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has in mine, it, all that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Friends, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, and on this day, we consider and marvel at the nature of God. God has revealed God's self to us as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet God is still one. God is the great one in three and three in one. It's impossible for us to fully comprehend. The Episcopal priest and Christian writer Robert Farrar Capon described our limited capability to comprehend this transcendence and mystery of God. And he put it like this, when we try to describe God, we are like an oyster trying to describe a ballerina. God is a trinity of one. It's beyond our reckoning. The very nature of the divine trinity confronts us with our human limitation. We don't have all the answers. And in this life, we never will. St. Paul put it this way, for now, we see through a mirror dimly, but then we'll see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. The Trinity oneness of God reminds us of our limitations. God is larger than our minds can contain. This is where we dwell now. We dwell in that time before we shall see face to face. 
We dwell in the time before we have all the answers. For now, we can only marvel at the majesty and mystery of God. This Trinity Sunday reminds us of our limits, and this is a gift. Recognizing our limitations gives us permission not to understand everything. And in our unknowing, there is one greater than we are. The wisdom and reality of God is exceedingly more vast and deep than our own capacity. And isn't this the way you want it? If you completely understood God, if God fully fit within the confines of your mind, then God would be smaller than you are, less than you. Is that what you want? What good is a God who is less than you? The oyster becomes greater than the ballerina. But not knowing, not having all the answers about God keeps us searching. We remain open and curious. We continue to search the scriptures. We listen in the quiet of prayer. We give thanks for the greatness of God. You know, when we feel that we've mastered something, we kind of close down because we know it all. The same thing happens in our life of faith. When we as the church feel that we've mastered our understanding of God and how it is that we fit within God's master plan, then we become dogmatic and brittle. We adopt a superior attitude. We know. We know the heart and will of God. We can speak for God. It's almost as if we are the ones sitting at the right hand of God. We are the ones who will come to judge the living and the dead. But that isn't our place. As my internship supervisor, Orlin Hoovey, liked to say, Mary, we're in sales, not management. It's been sage advice for me. We recognize that our understanding and wisdom is but a drop in the infinite bucket of our God. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, we reflect and marvel at the greatness of the living God three in one. So let us take a little time to dwell in wonder of each person in this divine one God. And here, too, we are lost in wonder, love, and praise. God the Father. God has revealed God's self as the Father. And now we might run up against the sharp corners of our limitations if our relationship with our own earthly Father has been a challenge. For those who did not have a, pre a father present in their lives, or perhaps the word father conjures up painful and confusing memories of abuse and harsh judgment. Calling God father gets mixed up in our human experience, but the point of calling God father as opposed to the generic parent is to evoke that personal relationship with our Creator. And certainly, we have two biological parents, and in that sense, God could just as easily be understood as mother. The first person of the Trinity has been revealed as father. It's associated with that first intimate connection each of us has with our parents when we enter this world, that between a parent and a child, and this first relationship connects us with the essence of God the Father. God has been revealed to us as God the Father. God is the source of our being. All of creation in its vast diversity has sprung from the infinite imagination of God. We are created to be in relation 
with our loving God, one who creates and protects and cares for us intimately, just as a loving father. This vast creation bears witness to the limitless creativity of our God. The Methodist pastor Earl Languth wrote a poem called The Wizard of Oz, spelled A-W-E-S, Wizard of Oz. The universe proclaims the awesome greatness of our creator God. He wrote, I cannot imagine a hand that could fashion a galaxy swirling in space with spiral arms crowded and stars and gas clouded with vast astronomical grace. I can't comprehend and I cannot pretend to number the galaxies there. To think they may be like the sands of the sea is a number my mind cannot bear. No hand wrought this wonder, I'm told as I ponder. So I wait for the tale to unfold. I know all this occurred by the power of his word. With awe I such glories behold. For as great as the universe is, with all its billions of galaxies, yet this fatherly God knows each of us intimately, down to the number of hairs on our head. In this realm, before we have all the answers, this we know. We are children of a loving creator, a heavenly father who dearly holds us dearly and loves us to no end. Next, let's consider the Holy Spirit. Our Trinitarian God has made God's self known to us as divine spirit. This spirit whispers to us, it urges and even goads us in unexplained ways. Peter Marshall was a Scottish American Presbyterian minister and during his career, he served as a chaplain for the United States Senate. After he had passed, his widow, Catherine Marshall, wrote a biography of her husband called A Man Called Peter. And in the book, she tells the story of an experience Peter had as a young man in Scotland. Young Peter was struggling with his sense of call and the purpose for his adult life. One night, Peter found himself walking home he decided to take a shortcut across the Scottish Moor. Now he was aware that in the middle of the moor there was a large deserted limestone quarry. But Peter was confident about his bearings and what path to cut. In the dark of the night, he suddenly heard a voice call his name, Peter. There was a sense of urgency in the voice's tone. Peter replied to the voice, yes. Who's there? What do you want? There was no answer, so Peter resumed on his way. He made only a few steps when the voice called to him again, this time with even more urgency, Peter! Peter stopped in his tracks and fell to the ground, and as he put his hand out in front of him, there was nothing there. He was on the very edge of the quarry's gaping hole. Just one more step and he would have fallen in. What was that? We could chalk it up to all sorts of things. Spooky imagination in the dark of night, coincidence, uh, a night bird song. But as Peter reflected on what had happened, he knew that God had spoken to him. His life was not supposed to end that night. He had a future destiny before him. We don't have all the answers, but in wonder and awe, we praise the work of God's Holy Spirit among us. And finally, our attention turns to God the Son. What we see revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ is the full depth and breadth and height of God's eternal love for us. His life is a demonstration of the divine love that will not let us go. There is no place so remote 
that the loving and healing reach of God cannot claim us. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. In this realm, we don't have all the answers, but from what has been revealed to us, we do know the scope of the divine love which claims us. In that great storehouse of never-ending love, we anchor our hope. We continue to look to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We grow in faith in the unfolding mystery and revelation of divine life and love. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our sermon hymn. Please be seated. At this time, we will welcome our new members, and I ask our new members to come forward. If you could come forward at this time, and um, so everyone can see your faces. And you can have a stand up here. have to go on either side of the projector there. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we had a, a lovely time getting to know each other a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to pass the mic down so that you can introduce yourselves, okay? I'm John Hassman. Carol Hassman. Marlene Scholl. 
Warren Schultz. Jane Brownell. Dick Brownell. All right. Thank you all. And um, we will follow our words of welcome as you find them in the bulletin. And I'm going to have to ask you guys to split a little. You guys go this way. And Jane and Dick, if you can go that way so that people can read that up there. All right. In fact, you guys can kind of turn around and face that too so you can see the words as well. And um, there are certain words that are in all capital letters and those are words from our mission statement. So we've woven our mission statement into our welcome. Uh, we are here this morning to welcome these new members into our community at Hope Lutheran Church. We are not a building, but the gathered family of God. We are brothers and sisters in Christ given this new identity through our baptism into Jesus' death and resurrection. As God's people, we abound in hope. Today, we are welcoming you as members of this family in the larger body of Christ. So if you guys could turn and face me for just a minute. And so we ask, do you desire to join the membership of Hope Lutheran Church? If so, please answer. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, yes, we do. And to the congregation, do you promise to welcome these new members, to invite them to participate in worship and song? Will you work shoulder to shoulder with them in acts of mission into the world? Will you listen to their wisdom and new ideas? Will you laugh and rejoice with them in celebration? Will you support and embrace them through sorrow and trial? If so, respond, empowered by the Holy Spirit, yes, we do. You guys can turn around and look at the words there again. Let's proclaim our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. And please turn and face the congregation again. New members, we welcome you into the family of our congregation and into the ministry of the church. As active followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to spread the good news. And let's welcome them together. We welcome you into our fellowship and into the mission we share. God grant that you may find here a fellowship of love and service. May we walk side by side as together we share in the unfolding experience of Jesus Christ. And let us pray. We thank you for bringing these new members into the community at Hope Lutheran Church. As we walk together as your people, may your Holy Spirit empower us to respect and cherish one another. Guide us ever forward into deeper faith in you as we proclaim your love and serve in your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give them a round <laughs> welcome. And I invite you to stand as well and let us share the peace together. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And take a moment to share the peace with those around you.
Please stand if you're able. Good morning, church family. As we gather together on this Holy Trinity Sunday, united in Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, your creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the good works of your hands. Instill in your people your care, your spirit of care for the earth, especially in the areas threatened by devastation and storms from climate change. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of leaders to speak truth and care for all who are endangered by poverty, by war, by gun violence, and by prejudice. Lord, in your mercy. Protector of all, we pray for the city of Buffalo. We pray for Uvalde, Texas. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray now for those we each name silently in our own hearts. From our Hope family, today we pray for Joanne Knudsen, Debbie Jasmine, Char Larson. We pray for Marilyn Starin and Sue Carlson, Joanne Blazer, Jacqueline Macht, and we pray for Larry LePage. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Three, you are community and you create community. Build up the ministries of this Hope Lutheran community that support those who are isolated, those who are lonely, who need support in their faith, and those who are in need of basics. Give endurance as we nurture vital and virtual relationships in our congregation and beyond. Lord, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. And all of God's people say, We join now in the offertory as we receive our Holy Communion elements. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your fields and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please follow the directions of the ushers as they invite you forward. And as you come to the front, please hold your hands out and we will place a host in your hands. We also have gluten-free wafers available. Just say the word and we'll have that for you. And then as you continue forward, you can receive the wine or the grape juice. Those of you who are joining us from home, I invite you to join us in the meal right now, the, bo the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come for all has been prepared.
Please remain seated. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like to invite our pastoral partners to come forward. We have a great team of people who go out to visit those people who are unable to um, come to church and worship with us. And so they very dutifully uh, visit our, our fellow members. And so um, do, do you need one? Do you guys? OK, all right. All right, let's just give them a blessing. Gracious God, we're so grateful for these people who are our hands and feet to bring the good news and the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to people in our congregation who are unable to attend. And we know that wherever two or three people are gathered in your name, you are with them. So we pray, Lord, that you will bless their time of, of fellowship with those in our congregation that they go to visit that you might be made known to them and the fellowship of your church might become vital and vibrant. Amen. Thanks for coming up. And I invite you all to stand as you are able to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our final hymn. Go in peace and love your neighbor.